too much for our melee maps. So we were on layers, we're going to look at regions, not really something you're going to use too terribly much on a melee map. Cameras, not, not so much either. Pathing, it can be helpful to, you know, see where pathing is, where you can't go, etc. But uh, for melee maps, you're mostly going to use the top four. Terrain, units, doodads, and point points. So I guess you could call that tud or padut. I don't know. You can, you can think of something more creative than that. So tools, don't really use this too terribly much. You can go through and, you know, just kind of decide if this is something you want to you wanna try to take advantage of, as I don't really find these too terribly helpful when using, uh, when using the map editor to make a melee map. Data, this is, uh, this is just a couple different options you can kind of get into for a little bit more adma uh, advanced map editing. One kind of simple feature here that I like that you can use to show other people previews of your map is the export map image. I'm going to click that. Okay, and it'll show you where the file is saved to, the dimensions of the file, the file size, the bounds, the camera angle, and you can also choose to include or not include certain features of the map. So once you've gone through and confirmed everything, just click Generate Preview, and it shows you the map. So here is our map with, you know, our grand little plateaus here hanging out, being awesome in the middle. All right, going to cancel and uh, go back here. Now we are on, let's see, we just finished data, so let's look at map. You will be spending probably a decent amount of time here, not too much, but uh, map info. This brings up a uh, submenu that you'll be... Um, you'll be using to put in your map information. So uh, the map name, we'll just put test, author, Naris, description, we, and we. So you can put whatever you want. You can also change the preview for the image. Um, the image small is kind of what shows up whenever you click on the map in the Battle.net join list. And then the image large is what happens when you click on the little magnifying glass and it shows you kind of the, the bigger window in the middle of the screen there. Options, there's just some options you can check or uncheck. Map bounds, this is how you determine, surprise, the bounds of a map. And you can adjust both the camera bounds and the map bounds. So you can move it out, move it in, whatever you want to do. And you'll generally want to use this in case, you know, you've added some features to a map that kind of stretch off to the side and you really want to get it in, but you don't want to have to remake the whole map. So you can kind of use this to expand and uh, shrink the map a little bit. This is where you can kind of convert textures. So you can convert, say, let's dirt light to ire dirt. You can convert organic cliffs to typhon organic cliffs. Pretty much it's a way of converting one texture in a map to a different texture of a different, um, different map theme. And then loading screen, you generally won't mess with this unless you're making a custom map. This is where, you know, if you play with some of those custom maps like uh, Desert Strike or any of the other ones, it'll have uh, the background that's customized with the title and all the information, usually like the release notes and whatnot. So that's where you would edit that. All right, so taking a look at uh, the next part here. And all of those features were contained in this, this little group right here. So you've got player properties. If you are making a uh, more than one person map, i.e. a melee map, you're going to want to make sure you have uh, player players assigned to the spawn location. So for now, this map is for one player only. And you can see if I click that, you can change the color, the race, um, change who controls it, etc. So for a melee map, you're going to want at least two players. So I'm going to put going to click player two here, who is blanked out currently, and click user. All right, you'll see that it now kind of highlights it, just like player one. And you've got start location random, and you pretty much just want to leave this as general as possible. Like, you don't want to pick a color, you don't want to pick a race. I don't like picking things for people. I don't really feel like it's my place. So I leave all these blank. You can change it to something if you want to, like if it fits into the theme of your map. But, I mean, a player can change it to whatever they want, so I just prefer to leave it, to, leave it as any. And uh, same with the decal. So then over here, you've got team placement basic. Now, if we were to have uh, multiple spawn positions, which we do not currently, they will show up right here and we can assign, uh, you know, let's say there's positions in each corner, one, two, three, and four. We can assign one and two to always be player one and then three or four to always be um, team two. 
<clears throat> and you can you can set it so that way you know team one won't always spawn up here and team two won't always spawn down here it'll just keep them together and this is kind of a similar feature with the advanced so we'll get into that once we actually have a map and some spawn positions that we can play around with so lastly game attributes game variants not really something you're going to use too terribly much with the melee map this is how you create um you know when you when you create a customized game let's say uh let's say you create um Nexus Wars. Uh, you're the creator of Nexus Wars. Uh, you would add a game type and you would put custom and uh, okay so let's say that we now have this custom game type over here but this you know this magical Nexus Wars that we've just modified has also has the capability to double as a two versus two melee map. So what you would do is you would click category melee and then two versus two. And it automatically arranges the uh, the positions in, in the in-game uh, lobby. So that is how that works. And uh, yeah, we'll be covering all this more in depth later. So if some of this isn't making sense, don't worry about it. So taking a look at that, we've covered that. Uh, module, this is really not something you're going to have to worry about too terribly much when creating a melee map. Triggers are kind of in-game events that can be, surprise, triggered by a event. Um, you can trigger the event yourself. Pretty much this is one of the features that you would use to create kind of the really heavily customized maps that you see in StarCraft II. Um, so we'll cover that later on. Also we've got uh, data. This is where kind of, the, I guess you'd call the really hardcore editing uh, of units, buildings, Pretty much this is kind of the, the engine of the map. And uh, this is where you change, you know, if you want to create a hero unit with a billion hit points. Um, it's a really, really exceptionally powerful tool. It's not one that I would suggest you just get in and start, you know, messing around with and uh, too terribly much on, you know, say a map that, uh, let's say you import some map from your friend sent you you probably don't want to mess around with it too much i mean you can because you're not going to break anything but um for learning purposes you could probably just create a brand new map throw down like a marine in the field or something and start messing with uh triggers once you've kind of got the idea of triggers you can kind of mess around with the uh with the data editor and uh really I'm, I'm talking it up like it's some dangerous thing it's really not it's really you know quite docile but um it's a lot more complex so you're going to want to make sure you have a grasp on triggers and maps and the basics of what we're going to cover here in the near future before you really get in here so that way uh, you have a better understanding of what you're doing as uh, like i said it's just extremely powerful um powerful piece of programming here so i'm going to cancel that for now and we'll take a look at that later i promise so uh text and report and you probably won't use this too terribly much for the uh for the maps here but we'll go over that way later as well and window this is just kind of some utility stuff here not too much going on and you've got the help and i think the online will help has a wiki link yep there you go so when in doubt go here help all right so that has covered the absolute basics here. I'm trying to look around see if I have missed anything. I do have a little bar here that shows the frames per second. Um, not really necessary. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So one more thing I do want to cover in this particular video, camera controls. You saw earlier that I am scrolling around here. I'm zooming in, zooming out, and you're probably wondering, how is he doing that? Well, if you haven't been playing around listening to them, listening to this video while playing around in the map editor yourself, uh, I will certainly tell you right now how to do that. Uh, first of all, get your mouse, put it in the uh, put it in the 3D environment, hold right click, and move around. Mac users, I'm sorry, I don't have a Macintosh, so I don't know exactly how these uh, how these clicking uh, commands translate into your functionality, but I'm I have full faith that uh, you can Google it and look it up, and uh, yeah, if you can't figure it out yourself, you know, like I said, there's always that wiki. So hold right click, move around. You can see that we can go pretty much anywhere in the map, including kind of the borders here. You can see there's nothing out outside of the immediate map boundary area. So I'm going to go back down here. Okay, now on your keyboard, the three keys that you're going to use for this are Control, Shift, and Alt. So first we're going to look at control, hold down the control key, and you can see the mouse cursor has changed. 
go ahead and hold right click and move your mouse around. You'll see that this actually rotates the camera so you can get a more 3D perspective on uh, the terrain that we have here. So I'm going to flip all the way around and you'll notice that I'm using my mouse and kind of dragging and then bringing my mouse back. An easier way to do that is you can hold right click while holding control on your mouse keep going all the way over to the right and hold it against the edge of the screen and you'll see that it keeps rotating until you let go. Uh, same thing for the top part and same thing for the bottom and same thing for the left. So I'm going to scroll back up. Okay, go ahead and release the control key. Now hold the alt key and right click. You can see that by moving our mouse we can, uh, we can zoom down and zoom back up. Same feature as before with the top and the bottom of the uh, of the windows. You can move your mouse to the very top and hold it down and it'll move. So there's that and then finally I'm going to zoom in here and hold shift and right click and you can zoom in and zoom out. So congratulations you can move a camera. So I would take a minute if I were you and get used to that, get kind of acclimated with uh, the way it handles. And lastly, the scroll wheel on the mouse. You can use it to zoom in and zoom out. So using a combination of these keys, uh, you can really take a look at the map once you've finished it, um, edit it for balancing, uh, for you know looks, for gameplay, and really get, this is how I, I edit my maps. I'll be, you know, I'll come down here and I'll, if I want to paint something, I'll be way down here trying to make sure that it blends in and looks as good as possible and then I'll scroll out take a look at it from different viewpoints see how the light reflects on it and then I'll lastly come down here to view camera reset to gameplay view and I'll see how it looks from there and uh, if it looks good we'll call it good move on to the next thing so um, like I said, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. This is like I said, this was the absolute basics. If this is all a bit, um, if this is all a bit, uh, you know, easy stuff for you, that's good. I just wanted to make sure that I covered as much stuff as possible for those of you who have literally never touched the map editor and have no clue how it works. So now you know how to get around in the map editor. The next tutorial will cover kind of the pre-map planning stage, um, what kind of map you're going to make, what things you need to take into consideration uh, in terms of balance, gameplay, fun, you know, um, just the looks of the map, the feel, the theme, and uh, we'll go over some basic uh, terrain editing and whatnot, and um, <clears throat> thank you very much for watching. I will try to get this up as soon as possible, and we'll move on to the next movie.